Hey there, Martin here. In this video I want to show you how to draw Finn from Adventure Time. I'll be using only ink tape with no tablet or pencil made sketch, just grabbing the program and making the character from the ground up. I was planning to make some sort of series where I show you my process to make characters, using famous characters like Finn in this case. My idea is to demonstrate that you can use Inkscape or any other vector software to actually draw, not just to make logos and graphic design stuff. So hopefully these videos will help you in some way to make characters. Ok then, let's draw Finn. Of course the very first step to drawing anything is uh, gathering reference. And here I have a few screenshots I took from uh, Google Images. Here I'm gonna do something that I wouldn't normally do if I wasn't recording. I'm gonna use the tools of Inkscape to build some sort of model with the right proportions and shapes. And hopefully this is gonna show a bit better how I'm seeing and analyzing the proportions. So I'm using the rectangle tool and the images to establish the basic shapes. Of course in the actual drawing the pose is gonna be different, but at least I have something to compare it to if I have some doubts about the shapes later on. So if you want to draw a pre-existing character, consider making one of these as a way to analyze how it's constructed. It really helps. Now I'm basically gonna draw a stick figure with the proportions from the model. The idea here is to establish the pose and the proportions as quickly as possible using just lines. And once the pose is nice and well defined, build the character on top. I guess if we were drawing a more traditional figure, this step could be called the gesture, but I don't feel that making a quick stick figure qualifies as a gesture. And we don't want to make a more complex gesture drawing because of two things. First, it's really hard and slow and impractical to make gestural lines and shapes using the mouse. And second, we don't really need a lot of information on the gesture. We don't need it to define the forms and the shapes, mainly because we are working with simple cartoons, but also because we are working with vector shapes and we can adjust the shapes after they've been placed. I still think that making even a simple stick figure is essential to be able to previsualize the shapes and see the way that they interact, but you don't need anything more complex than that, at least for simple cartoons. Ok, we are done with the stick figure, but before starting with the drawing, I want to go over a very important feature I like to use when I'm making characters. In this drawing I'll be making all outlines of one pixel width, so all the strokes should be of one pixel. Now, by default, if you scale an object, the stroke of the object gets bigger or smaller to maintain the proportion with the fill. This is a bit of a pain, since scaling shapes is one of the most common things you'll be doing. Well, in the tool controls of the object tool, there is this button that's enabled by default. This button controls whether the stroke will change in size to maintain the proportions or whether it will stay the same no matter how much you scale a shape. So if you want to be able to scale an object without constantly having to resize the stroke, make sure this button is disabled. And now we can really start. Here I'll be taking advantage of what I said a minute ago about the way vector illustration works. I'm gonna focus on completing the head first. I'll see later on if I need to adjust the forms so they fit with the rest of the body. I love this way of drawing. I feel that it's less linear than traditional way. You can always come back and adjust one part so it fits with the other ones you drew after. And there is something I'll be doing with the rest of the body. First I'm gonna throw in all the shapes that makes up what I need, and then really start to adjust those shapes and fix them. I feel that this way you really start to see the character better. The head was a special case, because it's such a self-contained shape, and I just like to have the shape done first. But with the rest of the body, it really helps to see the whole thing. Working with shapes also has its drawbacks though. Uh, for once there are a lot of rhythms or a lot of connections between the shapes that are harder to make. For example, here it would have been nice to connect the head to the body in one single line. And had I been working with lines, I could have made it look even more connected and 
the curvature could have been pushed even more, making the whole character more dynamic. But because I made the head first and then the body, I had to connect them in an improvised way. This is a drawback of working with shapes. There are ways to fix this, uh, for example using the pen tool to define the shapes with lines, but in that case, if you wanted to make some sort of animation, maybe using a skeleton animation program like Spine or Dragon Bones, then you would have to go through the lengthy process of rearranging the shapes so they work nicely with those tools. So I guess that is up to you to decide the correct method to make the final illustration. I'll be using shapes because I feel that's what most artists are gonna use when working with vectors. You may be noticing that I'm not sticking 100% to the stick figure gesture, and you should never do that. The stick figure is just a rough guide. If you feel like something doesn't look good, you can always deviate. In this case, the proportions of the legs didn't work out for me. Maybe I measured wrong at the moment of making the stick figure. The thing is that after the drawing is mostly made and posed, it's not difficult to change something on the fly like shorting the legs or slightly changing its position and scale. I know that I'm cutting out a few places in the time-lapse, but there's really not that much to talk about in this uh, particular illustration, and uh, I don't want this video to be boring. If you want to study what I'm doing, I'm gonna leave you in the description below the 15 minutes long real-time video, plus the SVG file containing the character. It's completely free, and hopefully can help you in case you want to follow along or just watch how I'm doing certain things. And we're close to be done. Like I said earlier, I'm gonna start making videos drawing famous cartoon characters entirely in Inkscape. So if you have a suggestion, please leave it in the comments and I'll do it somewhere in the future. So subscribe to the channel if you would like to see that and since you're there, a like will be heavily appreciated. Well, see you next video. Have a nice day.